Hello everyone, my name is Hubel and welcome to the AFMR 2022. So before this video actually starts, I want to quickly mention that all of the timestamps um, for sections of the video are going to be linked in the description below. Uh, so you can skip ahead and find certain parts of the video um, and you can just skip over parts. So I uh, just want to quickly mention that. All right, so getting into where you get the rig, um, first things first, uh, go to the link in the description. It's going to be a pay hip uh, link, and this is what you're going to see. Uh, don't really worry about this. This is just because I'm filming this um, before the rig is actually released. Um, but yeah, so this is what you're going to see when you go to the link. Uh, it's, you're going to have a couple pictures of the rig um, and all that good stuff. Uh, and then you also have a little read thing right here. You can read it if you want. Just goes over new features and everything. Um, and just kind of a brief description on everything. So I know probably some of you guys are going to be asking, why is it priced? Um, and this is because I, this is more or less a premium rig um, for what it is. Uh, it has a lot of features that a lot of other rigs don't have as far as um, advanced features. Um, this really is an advanced rig uh, and I've more or less perfected it. Uh, there, There's going to be bugs I know uh, that you guys are probably going to find. Yeah, so I, of course I'm going to be, whenever I do update the rig, anyone that does buy it uh, will get the update for free. Just want to make that very clear. Alright, so how do you buy it? Um, you click buy now, obviously, uh, or you can add it to your cart. And you're going to see right here, uh, purchase advanced people Minecraft rig 2022 edition. Uh, it is priced at $2. And uh, what you do is you put in your valid email address so that when the rig does get updated, I can send you a uh, link that will have the new one. Also, I want to quickly say, um, if you're watching this um, within the first month, uh, I have provided a coupon code that will give you 10% off if that's a little too pricey for you. I know that's kind of a high price but um, for a Minecraft rig, uh, but I have a 10% uh, off uh, coupon code. Uh, so what you do is you just put it um, 2022, uh, just like that, and you click add coupon and it is going to add it um, right there and it will give you a new price. It'll give you 20 cents off. <laughs> I know it's a big change, but um, yeah. So what you do, uh, you can pay through PayPal, a debit card or a credit card. Um, and uh, once you download or once you do all of that, it's gonna give you a prompt to download the rig. So once you download it, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a zip folder um, and you can use any zip um, program, I think. Um, I'm not entirely sure if you need a specific one, but it is a zip and I'm using WinRAR. So uh, I'll just leave a link for WinRAR in the description below. So the way you extract this uh, is you right click it. Uh, and then I'm not really familiar with um, Windows 11 yet. All right, so when you extract it, you're gonna get this folder right here. Uh, when you open up this folder, um, you're gonna get a secondary folder in it. That's kind of weird. Um, and you're gonna see a couple things in here. You're gonna see a readme. Uh, an advanced people Minecraft rig um, 2022, which is this is the LIB4D. Uh, this is the actual rig itself. Then you have a text folder and then you have a cape preset. So um, in the text folder that just has the default skins for things. Uh, so you have the main skin, the cape and the elytra. Also note that um, the cape, if you have a, an elytra on it, it won't um, interact with the actual elytra skin. You have to use this format. So I have changed the, uh, the cape so um, now it runs off of a different kind of format. So it runs off of this, uh, which I think is more uh, acceptable than the other ones that I had. Um, but I've provided uh, a bunch of capes that you can use uh, that were actually provided to me by my beta tester, Admin Rat. Um, so thank you to him, um, amongst a lot of other things that he helped me with in the rig. Um, and then you have a readme folder. Uh, this just kind of is a little briefing on it. Uh, tutorial video, which you guys are watching right now. Uh, and a lot of other things in here. So uh, read that if you want. What we're gonna be going over today is the LIB4D right here. Uh, this is the rig. Um, so I'm gonna be showing you guys how to actually open this. All right, so for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using Cinema 4D uh, S24, um, but I'm not gonna be kind of, I'm not gonna be going over all of the features in it. Um, I'm just gonna be going over just the rig. So uh, don't be intimidated if this doesn't look like your layout. Um, uh, it's It's, I'm just gonna be going over the rig. All right, so how you open the rig is you go to, to file and then go to open project or you can do control O or command O, I think it is on uh, Mac. 
And then we uh, just open up the rig here, and this is what you're gonna get. Um, you're gonna get a customizable preset, a faceless preset, a text folder, and then assets and lights, which we are going to go over uh, later. Uh, text folder just has the default skins in it. Uh, so I don't know if I'm gonna be really going over faceless. I might cover it briefly, but uh, I'm not really planning on keeping this. Um, it would be surprising if I actually kept this in the final version. So we're not gonna really go over that too much. Uh, so we're gonna be going over customizable preset. So you just double click it and then it's going to open up into your uh, uh, Cinema 4D. And uh, yeah, there's the rig. So again, um, if you want to skip to different parts in the video or see like how this, is, uh, this video is gonna be sectioned out, um, go check the description. I've left timestamps for everything that we're gonna be going over, such as controllers, user data, uh, facial user data, all of that. So the first thing that we're gonna be going over is the controllers. Um, so uh, I guess there's no easy way to do this. Um, well, I guess we just go top to bottom. So here we have the uh, squash and stretch. Uh, you can move this around, you can rotate it and do all of that. Uh, I don't really use this controller that much, but it's uh, there. Next we have the actual head controller. Uh, so you move this around, it's gonna move the head around. Uh, and as you can see there, we have a new smart move feature uh, that'll move the body around. Uh, we'll be going over that later. Coming down, we have the upper body controller right here, mid body right here. This is the hip controller right here. We have the waist controller right here. Uh, you can move that around. Coming over to the arms, we have the uh, shoulder joint right here. Uh, so you can move this around just like that. We have the wrist controller here. Uh, so you can rotate that uh, on every axis and it will rotate it. And we have the main hand controller. So this is what you're gonna be using to um, move the arm and create a bend. And then uh, we have the finger controller right here. Um, and it has a little Q on it now, so you know you can press Q on it, um, along with a lot of other things in this that are pretty similar to last year's um, rig. So the way you use this is you can just move this around and it will uh, kind of move the fingers and uh, pop them out, just like that. Uh, this little tr triangle on top, this is going to split the fingers or uh, s separate them, I guess, is a better word to use. <laughs> then if we were to press Q on this, we can get uh, all the controllers for each finger. So we have uh, the new thumb controller, uh, which actually was absent from last year. Uh, so there's that. Then you have each of the uh, fingers. All right, so moving on to the legs, we have the upper leg controller. Um, don't really know what you would use this for, but it's there if you do want to use it. Uh, then we have the foot goal controller. Uh, this is kind of a two part controller, uh, so it is going to be able to move the leg and everything. Uh, and you can also use it to um, control the ankles. So the ankles work uh, on the P or the red axis and the B or blue axis. And then we have um, this somewhat controller here. This just kind of moves around the entire rig. Uh, you can rotate it and do whatever you want with it. Um, and this is also where the user data is stored. So all of the settings. All right, next thing that I think we're gonna go over is the facial user data, this little Q uh, switch right here. Um, so I've redesigned this a little bit and it looks a lot nicer and everything and um, it's more noticeable, I guess. It's not as tiny. Uh, so with this, you can move this pretty much anywhere and it's going to uh, open and close and it's gonna stay kind of where you move it. All right, so when we click on this and press Q on our keyboard, um, it's going to open up and you can see this is the brand new um, controllers for all the faces or for the face. All right, so starting off, um, we have these uh, red switches uh, or green uh, as they turn on. Um, so the way these work is you click on them and you press Q. Uh, some people were asking me like, how do you actually activate these? Because I guess some people thought that you just click them. No, you press Q on them. So you press, you click on them and then press Q and it's going to enable and disable them. All right, so I'm gonna be going over these uh, in, in order from bottom to top. Uh, so starting off at the bottom here, we have the controllers for the body. So this will um, uh, hide them uh, if you have it like that. Uh, it will hide them except for the fingers. Um, so that's what that does. Uh, the next one up, this is going to enable the face controllers. So you can kind of come in here and mess around with these if you want to. Uh, that's what that's used for. Um, but this is how you hide them. Coming up to the next one, this uh, these two are for subdivisions. So uh, this second one from the top is for the uh, body subdivision. So you can see when we turn that on, it's going to turn on the legs, body, and arms, uh, just like that. And then the top one is for the face. So we just click on that and press Q. Uh, you can see that it's going to subdivide the face. 
All right, so now I'm gonna be going over each of these, uh, I guess top to bottom um, and left to right. Uh, so I've organized these um, dependent on what they do, so uh, or where they're kind of controlling. So uh, yellow is for the eyes, blue is for the mouth, and then purple is for the eyebrows. All right, so starting off with the eyes, uh, we have this top control right here, which will uh, make the eyes cross side horizontally. This next one is for the vertical cross side. So if you want to kind of mess around with that, uh, that's what that's used for. Coming over here, we have um, this controller and this is going to control the blink. Uh, so if you select both of these, you can make it blink or you can open up the eyes really wide. Over here on the, uh, I, I guess th these two are the, pretty much the same. It just works off of the eye. So this one is going to work off of this one. Um, and this one would work off of this one. But this one is going to slant the eyes just like that. And then the bottom one is going to do the same, but for the bottom. And then same for the other side. Uh, and then along with also the blink. Then we have the main controller here, which is going to move the eyes around. Uh, and it, we still have that uh, adapting kind of um, look to it. So it'll the eyes will adapt where the pupils are looking along with the eyebrows too. I have also... Um, kind of tweaked this a little bit and made it a lot smarter so that the eyes won't go past where they're supposed to. Um, this was not a thing in the last year's model, but um, yeah. Then we have these little side controllers which will control the eyes in, or the pupils individually. Uh, so if you want to kind of have one doing one thing and uh, the other one doing another, uh, you can do that. The This bottom controller is going to control the eye height uh, one, and then we have another eye height one that will kind of fine tune it. Coming over to the mouth, we have uh, this controller up top, which is the cheek puff. Um, so it's going to kind of puff up the cheeks. So if it's underwater or holding its breath or something, that's what that would be used for. I'm going to kind of skip this one for now, um, just because it's uh, we'll, get, we'll come back to it after uh, we go over this one. So this controller is for opening the mouth, uh, as you can see there. So then coming back up to this one, um, what this one does is it will control the mouth uh, position, so where it is located on the face. Uh, so you can change that. Then we have little side controllers here. So this is for the smile, and you can see that it still uh, is doing that kind of adapting cool thing where it will adapt with the, uh, the eye. And this goes for both sides too. So uh, if we just click the other side here, you can see that it's going to adapt. Then we have the top and bottom one, which is going to control the top lip uh, and then the bottom lip. And then these controllers at the bottom here are for the teeth. So you have the top teeth and then you have the uh, bottom teeth. Then we have the eyebrow uh, controllers over here. Uh, so I'm going to go over this one first and then the outside ones. So this one is just for kind of moving the eyebrows around. Um, you can animate that if you want to. And then over here on the sides, this one is going to control the eye or the eyebrow um, uh, thickness uh, vertically. And then we have uh, I guess the width of the eyebrows so you can change that around so with that being said i think that's everything for this uh, as far as controllers go um not really sure if there's anything else i really need to go over but um uh, i think that's everything all right so now moving on to the user data and what do i mean by this this is where you're going to find all of the uh, uh settings for the rig uh where you can change the eye color the skin uh, all of that so uh what you do to find the user data is you um, or the settings um, as well. I'll, I'll just call it settings just because it might make more sense to people um, so what you do to find the settings is you're gonna click on the base so you're gonna click on this and then over here on the right side is where you're gonna find all of them uh, or what you can do is you can just click right here all right so I'm gonna go tab by tab because uh, this is how it's laid out uh, starting with intro um, what you find in here, and I'm actually going to undock this just so it makes it a little bit easier. Um, so in here we have a little welcome, uh, welcome thing, uh, credits, contact, uh, where you can find me if there's any problems with the rig, um, and all of that, uh, copyright. And then for everyone that is wondering, how do you change the skin? Uh, this is where it is located. So, um, right here in the customize, it's one of the first things in the settings, uh, skin right here um, so you just click these three little dots and then you can uh, change the skin just like that so coming down this is gonna be a nice feature I think for people that are uh, have a lot of characters in their scenes and they can't really keep track of them uh, I have a naming feature so 
Right now it is set to rename, and as you can see up here, this is where it's gonna change. So if we were to name this uh, Steve, uh, it's gonna change it up here to Steve, and it's still gonna keep the title AFMR 2022. Uh, but if we wanna change it to Alex um, or uh, Feeble, we could do that, it's gonna change it up here. So kind of going along the same vein as that, uh, we have the base color. Now what this is going to change is it's going to change this outside base along with the uh, facial control Q switch. Uh, so if we were to change this to uh, like a blue, uh, it's gonna change the uh, Q switch and the base. What it's also going to change too, and I forgot to mention this, is it's gonna change this little icon up here if you're using newer versions of Cinema 4D. Uh, I don't believe when they added, I don't know when they added this feature, but um, it's going to change this as well. All right, coming into the toggle, the first set of toggles, uh, we have the hat layer. So this is going to be um, kind of your uh, either hair or if you have a hood or a hat, um, whatever you have on your second layer, this is what this is. So you can disable it um, just like that. You have the head extrude. And what this is used for is for uh, deleting the polygons of the skin and then extruding the hair and kind of giving it that kind of nice extrude look. Coming up next is we have the Alex arms, which are now integrated. Um, uh, this was something that wasn't in the previous one, and I know a lot of people have problems with it, so uh, I went ahead and integrated it. So uh, if you click enable, it's going to slim the arms down, uh, and these will work with Alex arms. So um, yeah, and it also adapts the the controllers with it too. So it's kind of a cool little thing. Unfortunately, fingers do not come with this. Um, this might come in a in version like 1.1 or something of the rig, um, but I'm not entirely sure yet. So um, just keep that in mind that this might come later. Uh, co kind of going along the same thing of the Alex or female skins, um, we have the female deformers. Uh, so it just kind of slims down everything and adds uh, and adds boobies to it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just thought that'd be a nice feature to add. All right, so coming on to the second layers. So this is if your skin has like a second layer or an outer layer. Um, these are disabled by default and um, they might be enabled by, by default in the future. I'm not entirely sure yet, um, but as they are right now, they're disabled. So uh, what you do is you just click on these little eyes and it will um, enable. All right, so moving over to the customization tab. Uh, there's a lot in here, so I'm gonna try to kind of run through it a little quick, uh, but it, um, I might need to stop and explain some things. Um, so first thing is uh, the reflectance. So what this is, is uh, as you can see, the skin does not have a reflectance map on it, but if we were to enable this, you can kind of see that it adds a reflectance and a kind of shiny, glossy look to it. Um, not really sure who would want this, but um, I know there's people out there, so uh, there you go. Then you have the eye reflectance toggle. So uh, this is just gonna kind of make the eyes glossy, as you can see there. Uh, or if we disable it, then it just goes back to that standard look. Coming over to the subdivisions, this one's a little buggy. Um, it doesn't seem to really care what you put in here. Um, so it might just be with what I, what version of Cinema 4D I'm using. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, if it does work for you, I don't recommend cranking this up. Uh, just keep it at three. Um, for the editor and for the renderer, I would not go past four for this, but to keep this one below three. Um, reason why is that it creates way too many polygons and it could crash your computer. Then we have the head smoothness. This kind of goes along with um, the subdivisions. So it, it enables when you enable the subdivision for the head. So what this does is it just kind of rounds out the head and features of the head. Uh, by default though, it is at six. So uh, you can turn it up a little bit if you want, or just completely turn it off. Uh, Whatever is up to you. Coming down to the eye resize, or the pupil resize more specifically. Uh, this is going to change the size of the pupils, as you can see there. Uh, so you can kind of, you know, mess around with it, get more cut. It, it kind of has a more custom um, thing to it, since you can kind of adjust it to where you want it. But by default, it is at 10. Next thing is the mouth, or well, these are all like the toggles that we're going into now. Um, but now we have um, the mouse shape, which is inside of the settings instead of being a controller over here. Um, so if you wanted to turn the mouth to square uh, right there, uh, we can keep it around. Next, we have the pupil toggle. Uh, so if you disable this, it will turn off the pupils 
Uh, and then we have the right eye toggle, left eye toggle, uh, eyebrow right, eyebrow left. And then we have the face toggle, which is disabled by default. Uh, what this does is it's if you have a some weird skin that eyes are just in a place that the eyes can't actually reach on the rig, uh, you can just turn this on and it'll get rid of the eyes and the mouth. Uh, tongue disable, um, teeth toggle, uh, nose. There's a little nose uh, like before. We come into the eye sparkles. So you have a non, uh, just no eye sparkle at all. We have one, uh, two, and we have three, which is uh, new. And then coming down into the colors, we have um, pupil type. So we have one, uh, which this is a more or less, um, it's, it's dark, but you can kind of see there's a little bit of color in it. Um, just kind of a darker shade. Uh, don't know uh, who really wants that, but it's there. Then we have uh, type two. Then we have uh, type three, which is just kind of Minecrafty, just double pixel. And then we have type four, which is more of an Anishwidge, more cartoony look. And then coming over to the eyebrows, um, this is there's you can't really see it because I set it to the same color, but the eyebrows are two different colors. So for eyebrow one, uh, this will change the outside. Uh, and then eyebrow two is going to change the inside. And then we have the back of the eye color, like the backlight uh, of it. So if you wanted to have it like a little tired, a bit more pink, uh, you can do that. Um, you have the tongue color, teeth color, nose color, eye sparkle color, uh, which is going to change that. All right, so coming into the bend, uh, as you can see here, we have a sharp bend. Um, and if you want to change it to smooth, you just click right here and it's going to smooth out the bend. Uh, so it's pretty nice not having to change like little maps and everything for it um, pretty simple and each limb has their own toggle for it so uh, kind of nice coming into the next thing we have the stretch feature uh, so by default it's set at 11 so what does this do so if you were to uh, bring the arm out you can see that it's going to stretch a little bit um, but and if you wanted to stretch more you can do that uh, or you can have it just not stretch at all uh, keep that basic Minecraft look, uh, but by default it is set at 11. And then we have the uh, colors for the controllers. So uh, if you want to change this around, kind of mess around with that, uh, that's where that is at. I actually, ooh, I kind of, ooh, I like the blue on that. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so here's all the controller colors with their proper names. And then we get to the deformers. So uh, same as last year, uh, deformer toggle right here. Um, you just click that. We have the round feature, uh, which will round out the limbs as you can see there. Uh, it's kind of a nice little feature. It looks good in some instances. And then we have uh, a lot of the, uh, well, all of the, uh, the settings for them. So you have the taper bulge uh, for all of these and everything. Uh, you can mess around with that, create your own kind of uh, character, um, or just add your own uh, if you want to, your own deformers. Coming to the smart body uh, animation tab, uh, we have the smart mode, which is right here at the top. Um, so we have the head toggle, which the head toggle is for this. Uh, so if we just close that real quick, um, you can see that when it, we move the head, it does move uh, the body. So when we move the head around, it's going to move the body slightly. Uh, you can just disable it right there. And when we move the head around now, it's just gonna move the head. Same with the arms. Uh, so when you move the arms around, you can see that it does move the body slightly. Uh, again, super easy, <laughs> one click and it's uh, disabled. And then we have the legs, which is disabled by default, uh, but if you want to enable them, uh, again, it's super easy, uh, and then you can uh, kind of mess around with that. Next, we have the body adaptations. Uh, no, not really body adaptations per se, but I didn't really know what else to call them. Uh, so we have the arm locker here. So what this is, is where the goal is uh, a child of. So. Right now for the shoulder, it is a child of the shoulder. So when we move the shoulder around, it is going to move the entire arm. Uh, but if we were to set this to locked, uh, the arm, the goal is gonna lock to itself. So it's just gonna stay by itself. Um, uh, so it's its own independent thing, um, except it was, it's still gonna move with the, uh, the rest of the body. And if we go to unlocked, uh, when we move the body around, it is the arms are gonna stay where they are uh, so this would be good for like an animation where it's like climbing up something and it needs to grab and then pull itself up uh, something like that um, 
that's kind of what that's used for. Next, we have the ankle toggle. Um, so by default, the ankles are on. So if you're to just kind of, you can see that the ankle warps it a little bit. Uh, you can disable that right there and it'll just keep the, the legs straight. Then we get into the head features. So we're just gonna turn this on real quick, uh, turn this on. Uh, so right here we have the smart blink. Now what this does is when we move, uh, when we start to have the character blink, it is going to squish the head down, uh, as you can see there. Um, so if we turn that off, uh, and then of course, if we were to move this, you can see it's not gonna move the head at all. Next is the smart look. Uh, what this is, is when the head is looking around and it kind of turns the whole entire head. As you can see there, it kind of twists it around and everything. Uh, leans it back, uh, all that. That's what that is. So again, you can just click that off and then it's going to stay still. Hair dynamics, this is um, referring to the little jiggle that the hair does whenever it's moving, uh, as you can see there, and it does it for every body part. So um, yeah, uh, you don't like that. And there's also a bug with this one. So if you, um, that's not really fixable per se, but um, it's preventable. Uh, so if you extrude the hair out really big uh, and it gets stuck, f so like when you move the head, it's gonna kind of you're gonna you're gonna know when it's um, when it's stuck. Uh, that is because of the hair dynamics. So just disable that and everything should be good. Uh, the smart face. This is just referring to how everything is kind of linked together. Um, so when you move everything, it kind of adapts with each other. So that's what that is referring to. If you don't like that. Uh, you can just disable it uh, just like that, and everything is just normal. Vibrate, this is for um, like the like an idle. So if you just want to have a character standing still, but you don't want them to be completely still, this is what this is used for. So if we just turn these on, uh, you can see that it's going to rock back and forth. And if we actually uh, increase the keyframes and have this rock back and forth, uh, that's what that's used for. Next is the cape, and I completely overhauled this. Um, really proud of this, actually. Uh, so, we have the toggle here. Uh, we have the skin uh, path right here. So again, you just click these three dots, find whatever skin you want for it. Uh, we have the controller color, as so you can change this. Um, you have the cape dynamics. Uh, so what this is, is when you have them enabled, it's going to kind of you can see it kind of sways back and forth when you move it. Uh, and it also goes along with when you move the entire body around, you can see it sways back and forth. Um, quick thing to note though, if you do have this enabled, it's gonna mess up the controllers and it's gonna be like really weird. So just kind of keep that in mind. Next we have the length of the cape, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, width, then we have color correction so we can change the hue of it, uh, saturation. Uh, the brightness Then we get into the deformers of the cape. Uh, so we have a couple toggles here. So we have spherify uh, Rounded edges, which is going to round the top of it uh, and then wrap Then we get into the sliders of the deformers. So we have a bulge uh, taper top taper bottom uh, spherify and Bottom round which is going to round the bottom and you can kind of adjust that to where you want it then we come into the rips. Uh, so when we move the rips, or uh, not really move them, but when we add them, uh, there's a bunch of them in here. So you can kind of mess around with these and uh, have fun with them. And what's kind of cool about this is that you can kind of mix them. So if you wanted to have like rip four, and then kind of mix it with rip, uh, you know, one or rip three or something like that, you can you can do that. So. Uh, it's very customizable in that sense. Uh, coming into the wind, which is uh, actually enabled by default, uh, it's gonna have the cape blow in the wind like that. Um, and you can change all the settings through here if you want to. Um, so all of this stuff. And then we get into the controllers. So we have this top controller, uh, which you can move this around just like that. Uh, this secondary controller, uh, you can move it out. You can move it side to side. You can move it up. You can rotate it. Uh, and then the same goes for this one too. You can also move it around, rotate it, and do all that kind of stuff with it. So it's it's pretty smart now. Um, it's a pretty advanced cape. Coming into the Lystra, I'm not gonna spend too long on this just because of it's the same one. Um, so you have the skin path, you have 
color correction. Uh, you have these controllers that'll move it out, just like this. You have this green kind of orb controller right here um, that will, uh, if we can just click it. If we can just click, click it, there we go. Uh, this will move this around, you can rotate this. Uh, and then you have these bend deformers, so if you just click on them, and click this little orange dot right here. Uh, you can move this around and kind of warp the cape a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the elytra. So I think that's about it for um, what's actually in the rig itself. Um, the only other thing is that I'm going to actually go over right now is the presets. So, um, or the assets more or less. So... Uh, in here, we have the cape, hair, jacket, and tools. Uh, cape is pretty much just the cape that you, you get in the rig, but you can attach this to whatever else you want. Um, so, yeah, that's there. So if you want to attach it to like a mob or another character or a different rig or something, uh, that's what that's used for. So, yeah. Coming into the hair, uh, I'm not going to spend too long on this just because it's kind of a self-explanatory thing. Um, but you have user data inside this uh, white box and you can disable different parts of it. Uh, you can change the skin through here, uh, all that stuff. Um, and there's an FFD. Um, so what this is, is it just, you can kind of adjust, or not adjust, but like create your own kind of hair, I guess, in a way. Uh, so what you do is you just kind of um, select all these polygons, all of the um, polygons that are not the hair and then delete them. So I'll be back when I'm done with this. So once we have everything uh, selected, you just press delete or backspace and I forgot to delete this. My bad. Um, so what you do is you just control A it and then uh, you go into uh, extrude mode and you can just extrude this um, just like this. Uh, or if you want to kind of, you know, fine tune it a little bit, uh, kind of do something like this, uh, you can do that. Um, and uh, there you go. Uh, so how do you attach this? Um, so what you do is we're just going to reset this position, and that is not the reset position, my bad. Um, we're going to move it over there. Uh, so how do you attach this? Um, what you do is you open up this and you're gonna see a dot. Uh, so what you do is you go to the search and type a dot, which you'll find all of the uh, attachments for the rig. Um, so you have the hair, uh, then you have the body uh, labeled B. So where, you, where do you attach this? You attach this to the body attachments. And then you can attach these to the neck if you want to, even though they're uh, hidden. Uh, so when you move the body around, it's gonna move uh, that and then you can kind of mess around with that with the uh some other stuff all right coming into the jacket uh this is very similar to flash's jacket um so how do you use this uh you click on this white um triangle thing uh you have the skin in here uh skin path uh you have the edit mode which is kind of it's supposed to be the other way around um i misworded it um but you just disable it and it's going to shrink it down to this uh, and kind of the same thing, you just select all of the invisible polygons, or not invisible polygons, but all the, the polygons that aren't the skin. So I'll be back when I'm done with that. All right, so now that we have everything, we just press delete or backspace. Uh, and then we go back into our regular um, model mode. Uh, select the triangle thing and enable or disable where, whichever it is um, and it kind of extrudes it and it gives it like this nice uh, subdivided feel um, and then you have a couple things in here of course uh, like you have the FFD and with this you can um, kind of move and uh, warp things like that um, in that sense so that's what that's used for uh, or you can use a brush if you want to um, and then you have a couple deformers so you have like taper uh, bulge, um, subdivider, and you have a wind, uh, so if you enable that, it will kind of blow in the wind, and of course, you can change all the settings to this, just like that. So again, how do you, uh, install this? You just drag it to where you want it, uh, type in a dot, and drag the jacket mesh to the body, 
Uh, and now when you move the body around, it is going to move the jacket around uh, and nothing else. So yeah, it's so coming into the final thing. We have the tools. Uh, this has all of the 1.14 textures with, uh, including netherite, um, same as last year. So what do you do with this? You just put this where you want it. So if you want this in the right hand, uh, just like that. Um, and we can change this if we just click on this or, or this like white kind of orby thing, orb, whatever. Um, you can select that and then you can pick right here the tool. So you have a you have a sword, pickaxe, shovel, axe, hoe, um, all that stuff. Uh, and then you can change the texture of it or the material. So you have wood, stone, iron, gold, diamond, and then netherite. Uh, and then you can change the size of it. Uh, so if you want a really you know, big, big, really big sword, then you can do that. Um, and then uh, along with this too, you can also just click on this if you want to extrude it, and uh, you know, just all of the um, things are unlocked. So, or for the tools, so it's pretty easy to. Uh, so you just do something like that, and uh, yeah, now the sword looks cool. So. Again, same thing, it's just putting it in a different place. So this one is linked, or this one's at the right arm. So you want to throw that and make that a child of the right hand attachments. So uh, there you go. Now when you move the arm, it's going to move the sword uh, and everything that is linked to the arm. So even like the shoulder or the body, um, even you know waist and all that, it's all gonna be linked uh, to it uh, which also too I forgot to mention um, you can use the uh, wrist so if you want to have the wrist kind of moving with it uh, you can do that and it works with all of them um, I think that's everything the only thing I didn't go over was how to extrude um, which is pretty simple it's pretty much the same as every other rig you just find the layers and uh, for some of you it might be over on the right hand side uh, going vertical you find layers find AFMR mesh, uh, which is white, and you um, unlock it, and then you just select the, what you want to extrude, go into polygon select mode, um, UL, uh, we can, for loop selection, press D, and uh, hold control and drag, and there you go. Uh, again, I'm not giving you guys a full tutorial, this is just how to use the rig, um, so go watch a different video that I've made on how to extrude and full cinema 40 tutorial so um yeah last but not least i think um is the uh lights so you have this light room and then this these settings uh so you can kind of see what this is um you can go ahead and extrude it or not extrude it but render it um so if you don't like the uh, color you can go into layers and unlock the hidden and unlock uh, find your material manager, find background, click this, go into the gradient, uh, change it to, I don't know, let's do like light pink or something. Um, eh, that's a little bit too, uh, let's do like a light yellow. That's kind of the same color. <laughs> um, what about like that there? Yeah, you get the point. Um, and then you can also change, because this isn't a box, but uh, it's a thousand by a thousand. Uh, but you can change this to like 1920 by 1080, uh, just like that. And it's gonna render now in uh, 1920 by 1080. And then we also have the old uh, Minecraft Lightroom. It's still really good. Uh, let me make sure that we do have it set to that. Uh, and then we render this out and it will render in this really nice light room that has these nice clouds, nice sky and everything, makes everything look really good. Kind of like a blue monkey kind of animation style. Um, but I think that's about it for this tutorial video. Um, this is like my fifth time recording it, so sorry if I ran through things uh, a bit quickly. If you do have any questions though, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And uh, again, uh, use promo code 2022 for 10% off of your purchase of AFMR 2022. Uh, that's going to be lasting about a month. I might extend it, a, but I'm not sure. So uh, make sure to get on that. And also anyone that has downloaded 
the uh, 2020 version, um, check your email because I have sent you a promo code that you can use uh, to get even more off since you guys did support the previous version. Um, but for all you newbies, uh, yeah, use that promo code quickly because it's going to expire. Um, and I might do a sale some, some other time um, in the future, but for now, and it's uh, pretty cheap. So, yeah. Um, anyways, have fun with the rig. Um, I'm really proud of this, and it's just, it feels very solid and it feels very clean to use. Uh, but let me know your guys' thoughts and um, what you guys think about the rig. So, uh, yeah, I will see you guys all later. Peace.